In this episode, we're going to be painting a tree. First, we'll need to create a simple background. I'm going to do that by choosing a light blue color for the sky, and then I'm going to choose fill. If I don't like the color I chose, I can always hunt around for one that I like better. And then I'm going to use the airbrush to create a gradient. We want the sky to be a little bit darker and a little bit more indigo towards the top. So I'm going to use a big brush so that I create a nice smooth gradient. I'm going to use less pressure as I move down towards the bottom and more pressure at the top. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to hold Alt and sample that original blue color that I used and make it a little bit lighter and add some light color. Now this is going to define where the horizon is. I'm going to add some light yellow and we'll have our horizon right about there. I'll create a new layer and let's call it horizon. We want to turn preserve transparency off and we'll use the rectangular selection tool to go ahead and draw a nice straight horizon across the bottom of the canvas. We'll pick a nice grass green color and we'll choose fill. If you don't like the green color, you can always hunt around for a color you like better. So don't always expect that you're going to have to get the color right the first time. I don't usually get it right. We'll choose select none to get rid of that selection and we'll use a darker green with the airbrush to create a gradient along the bottom of the horizon to create a sense of distance. We'll sample the lighter green color, we'll make it even lighter, and we'll lighten near the horizon. And we'll make a smaller brush and we'll give a sense of perspective by having these lines that kind of converge over at the right there on the horizon. That makes this look like it's a little less flat and more in perspective. And we'll use the diffuse blur to go ahead and blend that a little bit. Now you'll notice that if you blend near the edges of the canvas, sometimes it pulls in some weird color. So what you can do is use the distorto brush to go ahead and push that stuff back off of the canvas. We'll turn preserve transparency off and we'll go ahead and use the diffuse blur to blend the edge of the horizon. So it's not so sharp. If we blend it, it's going to look more distant and the more we blend it, the more distant it gets. And that goes for pretty much anything in your painting. We'll use a light, pressure to go ahead and soften it and then we'll use the airbrush and turn on preserve transparency and use that light green color to paint over the edge because a little bit of fringe might have been created when you blended there. Let's create a new layer for hills. We'll select a light blue color that's a little bit muted and the mountain knife. We'll make sure that that layer is below the horizon and then we'll go ahead and start painting. We'll paint in a nice distant mountain or hills. We can use the diffuse blur brush to go ahead and blend that too, to set it into the distance. That helps it look nice and far away. And of course, we'll need to use the airbrush along with preserve transparency to just paint over any potential fringe. And we'll add a little bit of atmosphere by adding some of the background color. And we can even add a little bit of a warm tint to the right side of the mountains. That just gives it more flavor. We'll turn preserve transparency off. We'll create a new layer for trunk and we'll use the jitter scratch board which has a nice rough edge along with a dark brown to go ahead and draw on our trunk. Should be getting something like that. You wanna make sure you have pen pressure so that you can draw a thick to thin trunk. And then you want all of your branches that fork off to be slightly smaller more or less than the last branch that it forked off of. So each time you fork, you wanna use a little bit less pressure and you want your branches to taper off at the end. So you want them to be wider at the bottom where they join the branch and then thinner at their tip. And it may take a couple tries to get this right. So be very patient with this. Resize your brush if you need to. If you have to go and paint over the whole trunk to widen some areas, go ahead and do that, that's okay. You'll see here, I'm just gonna modify this a little bit and thicken it up at the base. That way it looks like the trunk is the thickest part and we'll go ahead and add new layers as we need to for the smaller and smaller branches. So the next smaller set of branches, I'm gonna create a layer for. I'm gonna go ahead and use the rough ink this time for these branches. And I'm just gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna do the same brush stroke that tapers off at the end. And I'm gonna make sure that my branches are smaller and smaller as they fork. And as I need to, I'm going to create separate layers for the smaller branches. This just makes it a little easier to work sometimes. So you'll see here I added a layer for small twigs and I'll add a layer for even finer twigs. And like I said, the more big branches you add, the more small branches you're gonna have to add. So this did take me quite a long time to do. It doesn't look like it in the time lapse, but it took quite a bit of time to draw on all these branches. I'm gonna add some lumps on the trunk just so it's not all perfect, some little knots and things. 
And then we'll go ahead and go back to the fine twigs layer and we'll merge all of the twigs and trunk layers down to one layer. And we'll use a dark brown with the airbrush with preserve transparency on to go ahead and add some shading. We're gonna decide that our light is coming from the right side. So I'm gonna shade the left side of the trunk. I'm just gonna worry about the big main branches here. I'm not gonna worry about all those small twigs because I'd take forever to shade them this way. And they don't really need to be that shaded because we're gonna cover them with some leaves. If you were gonna leave these branches uncovered and this was gonna be a dead tree, then of course you would wanna go through and shade some of your branches. I'm gonna add a little bit of reflection, which is just the grass color reflected onto the left side of the tree. I'm gonna add in a little bit more shadow to give the tree some form. And then I'm going to sample the brown color, make it a little bit lighter. And I'm going to add a little bit of highlight. The brush I'm using here is the Smooth Palette Knife. And you have to do kind of short overlapping strokes because the brush runs out of paint with each stroke. So each time you pick up your brush, it's like adding more paint to it. But it really gives it a nice bark texture. If we pick a dark color and we use the sponge, we can add some more texture. So we're just painting over the whole thing. And then we can blend it a little bit with the coarse oily blender, which works along with our paper texture. So make sure your paper scale and contrast are set pretty high here. And I'm just using strokes that follow the contour of the tree. Next, we'll brighten the highlight side of the trunk. We'll get a selection from the trunk layer and we'll turn off preserve transparency. We'll create a new layer that is a screen composite method and we'll call it lighten. We'll go ahead and use a lighter brown to go ahead and lighten the highlight side there. This adds a little bit more form and makes the lighting a little more dynamic. So just lighten all of those major branches there and then we'll use the chalk to conceal a little bit. If you paint with black on a screen layer, you will basically erase. So that adds a little more texture. We'll add a little more lighter color and we'll use the organismal texture polypay wool. That adds a few little bright spots and just makes the trunk look a little more rough. We'll add a new layer for darken. And for this, we will use a slightly larger paper texture. We'll go ahead and paint in some dark brown. We'll reduce the opacity of that layer. And we'll go ahead and merge all of the trunk layers down by doing Control E. And now we'll create a new layer. We'll call this leaves fill. This is gonna be the bulk of the leaves. We will use the Impressionist leaf brush with a dark color, like a dark brown or a dark blue and really just go ahead and fill in this. This is gonna be the background leaves. This is gonna be the back side of them, so they're not gonna be getting any light. And we will go ahead and create a new layer that's called Leaves Mid. We'll use the Veiny Leaves Particle Brush. And you have to pick two colors for this. So pick a light green that's a little more yellow and a dark green that's a little more blue. And then you have to use kind of the right arch stroke here to go ahead and fill these in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse this because it's gonna take me quite some time to fill in all these leaves, but really you just wanna fill in the areas where there's already a dark patch. You can leave some gaps here and there. You want your leaves to go all kinds of different directions, but you want them to generally kind of look like they're hanging in clumps. I'm going to make a selection from the leaves mid layer, and I'm going to show hide marquee to hide the selection. I'm going to create a new layer for darken make it a multiply composite method and use a dark blue along with the airbrush to create a sense of a shadow side. All of these leaves together create kind of their own shape. So you want the shadow side to look a little bit darker overall. And if you overdo it, it's okay because on a multiply layer, if you paint with white, you're going to erase. So I'm just going to conceal a little bit of that shadow on the highlight side. And now overall, the mass of leaves looks like it's a three-dimensional shape itself. I'm gonna create a new layer, and I'm going to pick a light green. I'm going to use the sponge, while that selection's still active, to go ahead and paint in some highlights on the highlight side, and brighten everything a little bit. And I'm going to sample the sky color, and I'm gonna put in some reflections on the leaves near the bottom there, because sometimes leaves are shiny, they reflect a little bit of the sky color. I'm gonna reduce the opacity of that layer just to find a nice blend as well as the layer below it. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna create a new layer for shadow and I'm gonna rename the other two layers. I'm gonna use the chalk brush on the highlights layer to go ahead and add a few more little highlights on some of those leaves to really help them stand out. 
You want very few highlights. So something like that looks pretty good. And maybe a little more sky color for some of the reflections near the bottom there and on a few of the darker leaves. I'll turn Preserve Transparency on for the leaves fill and I'll go ahead and use the sponge to go ahead and lighten near the highlight side a little bit. So it's not all black. There's a little bit of dark green in there. Next, we'll go ahead and group all of the tree layers into a group called tree. And then we want to drop the background layers individually. So we'll start with hill. We'll go to layers drop. Then we'll go to the horizon layer and we'll go to layers drop. Now the background's on a single layer. We'll go to effects, focus, soften. And we'll soften the background just a little bit to put it into the distance so that the tree stands out and is a little sharper. And we'll choose drop all and we'll choose all copy, paste in place, that creates a duplicate. We'll choose effects, focus, soften again. And we'll go ahead and blur this a little more this time. We'll create a mask on that layer and then we'll paint with black along with the airbrush to go ahead and conceal some of that blurring. So this is bringing it back into focus. We wanna keep the top edge of the leaves and maybe some of the sides of the trunk a little bit out of focus, but you can decide what you wanna put in focus. Let's create a new layer and let's make it an overlay composite method. We'll sample this blue color from the sky and we'll choose fill. That gives it kind of a color tint. And we'll add a mask. We'll use black with the airbrush to mask out and conceal some of that. So it's basically erasing it a little bit there. So we want just a little bit of flavor. We'll create a second overlay layer and this time we'll use a different color. Let's use this orange color. And just like we did before, we'll create a mask and we'll mask out some of that, but we'll leave a little more orange on the right side where the light's coming from. So now there's kind of this nice balance. We'll drop all, we'll duplicate the layer again by doing select all copy paste, and we'll set the composite method to screen. This time we'll go ahead and fill the mask with black and then we'll paint with white with the airbrush to go ahead and paint in some light. This is kind of the opposite of what we've been doing. It has a really nice effect. We'll reduce the opacity of that layer. And then we can blend the trunk a little bit more using the coarse oily blender, just to give it a little more character. You can play with the paper settings to get some different effects, but really you wanna blend along the direction or the grain of the trunk. So up and down the trunk, and then use a little sponge texture if you need to, very carefully to just paint over the trunk and try not to paint on your background make that layer a multiply composite method as we normally do for textures. And then finally, I'll add some fine details to the trunk using the detail oils brush. These will be little cracks and crevices and just little sharp, tiny little details. I'm going to blur some of those details a little bit using the blur brush because we did that nice focal effect and I don't want anything near the edges in that already blurred area to be too sharp. So I'm just gonna blur everything equally till it looks good. And now I think we have a finished tree.